Hello everyone, I am Dr. Trupti and you are watching my YouTube channel Enjoy Biochemistry. If you find the content on this channel useful, please like, share and subscribe. In the video lecture series on enzyme, today let's learn about the active site of enzyme, specificity and mechanism of action of enzymes. We know that enzymes are biocatalysts. They increase the rate of reaction but they are neither consumed nor permanently altered in the reaction. And in addition to being highly efficient, enzymes are also extremely selective. The enzymes are big in size as compared to substrate which are relatively smaller and the active site is a small cleft like region of enzyme where the substrate binds and catalysis occurs. So this active site, it is much more than simply a recognition site for binding substrates. And within that active sites, uh, the substrates are brought into close proximity to one another in optimal alignment with the cofactors, prosthetic group and amino acid side chains that participate in catalyzing the transformation of substrate into products. So at the active site of enzyme, substrate binds, catalysis occurs and there is formation of products. So the first step of enzyme action is the binding of substrate to the active site of enzyme, then formation of enzyme substrate complex which is followed by catalysis that is product is released in this process and again the enzyme is available for reuse. Now let's see the salient features of active site of enzyme. Active sites are clefts or crevices or pockets which occupy a small region in big enzyme. Active site contains a substrate binding site and a catalytic site and this catalytic site is for the catalysis of the specific reaction. Substrate binds at the active site by weak non-covalent bonds that is reversible bonds. The coenzyme cofactors they are present as the part of catalytic site. And the active site is made up of amino acids which are known as catalytic residues which are far from each other in the linear sequence of amino acid that is the primary structure of protein. For example, the enzyme lysozyme it has 129 amino acids and the active site is formed by contribution of amino acid residues which are numbered 35, 52, 62, 63 and 101. And the existence of the active site, it is due to the tertiary structure of protein resulting in the three-dimensional native conformation. The active site is not rigid in structure and shape. Rather, it is flexible to promote the specific substrate binding. It is largely responsible for the substrate specificity of enzyme. And the amino acids which are present at the active sites are serine, aspartate, histidine, cysteine, lysine, arginine, glutamate and tyrosine. So these are the various salient features of active site of enzyme. Now let's see what is the specificity of enzymes. What is enzyme specificity? It is the ability of enzyme to discriminate between two substrates. The enzymes are highly specific both in the reaction catalyzed and their choice of substrates and that's why the enzymes possess specificity and specificity makes it possible for number of enzymes to coexist in cell without interfering in each other's action. What are the types of enzyme specificity? There are three types substrate specificity, reaction specificity and stereo specificity. Substrate specificity can be absolute substrate specificity then it can be relative substrate specificity and broad substrate specificity. In the substrate specificity, what is the absolute substrate specificity? And it is because certain enzyme act on only one substrate and catalyze one reaction. For example, this is the reaction that is glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate by glucokinase. This is the reaction of glycolysis pathway. This enzyme glucokinase it is highly specific 
for glucose only it cannot act on fructose and that's why this glucokinase has absolute substrate specificity likewise lactase lactase acts on the disaccharide lactose and this lactose is made up of glucose and galactose so by the action of enzyme lactase it is converted into glucose and galactose the another example is urease the enzyme urease acts on urea to form ammonia and carbon dioxide so these enzymes glucokinase lactase urease they have absolute substrate specificity now what is relative substrate specificity here the enzyme acts on more than one substrate it can be group specificity means the particular enzyme act on the uh, substrate which belong to one particular group and bond specificity where they are linked together by the particular same bond for example in the group specificity chymotrypsin is the enzyme which hydrolyzes peptide bonds of aromatic amino acid that is phenylalanine tyrosine tryptophan and trypsin which hydrolyzes peptide bonds which involve basic amino acids like arginine and lysine so these enzymes are specific for particular group of substrates here in the bond specificity alpha amylase it cleaves alpha 1/4 glycosidic bonds of carbohydrate and it is very important in digestion of carbohydrates lipases they hydrolyze the ester bonds of lipids so they have the relative specificity for that particular bond means here the substrates are linked together by that particular bond and these enzymes they will cleave that bond so they have that bond specificity so relative substrate specificity can be of two types group specificity for example chymotrypsin and trypsin which is very important in the digestion of uh, proteins in the bond specificity amylase enzyme important for digestion of carbohydrate lipases which is important for digestion of lipids so this is the relative substrate specificity what is broad substrate specificity here the enzyme acts on more than one structurally related substrates for example hexokinase hexokinase acts on glucose to form glucose 6 phosphate this hexokinase is not only specific for glucose it can also act on fructose to form fructose 6 phosphate it can also act on mannose to form mannose 6 phosphate so this hexokinase has a broad substrate specificity it can act on glucose fructose mannose now what is the reaction specificity in the reaction specificity enzyme is specific to that particular reaction but not to the substrate and catalyzes only one type of reaction now let's take a example of pyruvate so the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase acts on pyruvate to form acetyl coa which is further utilized in the tca cycle lactate dehydrogenase can also act on pyruvate to form lactate in the anaerobic glycolysis then pyruvate can be carboxylated to oxaloacetate by the action of enzyme pyruvate carboxylase which is very important in the gluconeogenesis and transamination of pyruvate leads to formation of alanine this is very important transamination reaction which is carried out by uh, alanine transaminase so these are the various reactions which which, which which is very important here the enzyme is specific for particular reaction but not to the substrate and this is reaction specificity third type of enzyme specificity is stereo specificity so in the stereo specificity particular enzyme acts on the stereo isomers for example l lactate dehydrogenase it acts only on the l lactic acid l amino acid oxidase can act on only l amino acid salivary alpha amylase acts on only alpha 14 glycosidic linkages so this is the stereo specificity isomerases and epimerases they do not show stereo specificity so far we have learned what is the active site of enzyme and what is enzyme specificity now let's see what is the mechanism of action of enzyme and here we need to understand how do enzyme work so enzymes they work by lowering activation energy and formation of enzyme substrate complex is the first step in enzyme catalysis 
which is subsequently converted to product and free enzyme so the next question is how does enzyme substrate complex form so there are various theories which can explain the formation of enzyme substrate complex for example lock and key model induced fit theory substrate strain theory now the third important question is how does enzyme catalysis occur what are the various mechanisms of enzyme catalysis so the enzyme catalysis occurs by proximity and orientation acid base catalysis covalent catalysis and substrate strain catalysis so mechanism of action answers these three important questions how do enzyme work what how does the enzyme substrate complex form and how does enzyme catalysis occur so let's see the answers of all the three questions for enzyme action for substrate comes in contact with the enzyme to form enzyme substrate complex then enzyme catalysis occurs enzyme acts on the substrate to form product so it leads to formation of enzyme product complex then product is released and enzyme can be reutilized so at the starting point of reaction the reactants are at their ground state and when enzyme acts on the substrate it is the transition state so this transition state or phase in a reaction where the breaking and making of bonds takes place and there is energy change occur during the reaction and virtually all chemical reactions they have energy barrier separating the reactants and the product and this barrier is called the activation energy so what is the activation energy it is the amount of energy required to reach the transition state and it is the difference between energy levels of ground state that is the reactants and the transition state in the mechanism of action of enzyme the first question was how do enzyme work and the answer is enzymes work by reducing activation energy this is the x axis showing direction of reaction and this is free energy now let's first see the uncatalyzed reaction that is the reaction without enzyme this is the ground state and from the substrate in the uncatalyzed reaction there is formation of product this is the transition state and this is activation energy without enzyme what is this activation energy it is the amount of energy required to reach the transition state this is the transition state which means that activation energy is equal to free energy of transition state minus free energy of substrate and this transition state it is the transitory molecular structure that is no longer the substrate but it is not at the product it is the least stable but highest free energy state now enzymes reduce the activation energy which means that in the enzyme catalyzed reaction the activation energy is reduced so with the help of enzyme only the activation energy is reduced reduced so this is the activation energy with the enzyme which is reduced so that the rate of reaction is increased but the energy change in both catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction it is same so there is no difference in the free energy of overall reaction between catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction that is the energy of reactants minus energy of products so only action of enzyme is enzymes reduce the activation energy the second question in mechanism of action of enzyme is how does enzyme substrate complex form so there are three theories which support the formation of enzyme substrate complex lock and key model induced fit theory and substrate strain theory there are three models of binding of substrate to the enzyme the first is lock and key model second is induced fit theory and third is substrate strain theory the first model lock and key model it is also called as fischer's template theory which was proposed in 1890 as per this model the enzyme is uh, active site is rigid and pre shaped it is complementary to the specific substrate so if the substrate is not specific for that particular enzyme it cannot bind to that enzyme so that in this theory as per this theory particular enzyme binds with the specific substrate here the active site is rigid and pre shaped 
it allows binding of only specific substrate and it cannot explain the effect of allosteric modulators and other inhibitors second model of binding of substrate to enzyme is induced feed theory which is also called as hand in glove model which was proposed by daniel koshland in 1958 as per this theory the active site of enzyme is flexible and the shapes of active site can be modified by binding of the substrate to the enzyme and this substrate induces conformational change in enzyme and then enzyme catalysis occurs so this is the enzyme with flexible active site where the su substrate binds leads to conformational change in enzyme and then enzyme catalysis occurs so the simplified explanation uh, it is also called as hand in glow model because when the glow is put on a hand at first the glow is in a partially folded position but hand can enter into it when the hand is again introduced the glow is further open similarly conformational changes occur in the enzyme when the substrate is fixed and this theory can explain the effects of allosteric modulators the third model which can explain the binding of substrate to enzyme is substrate strain theory as per this theory substrate is strained due to the induced conformation change in the enzyme enzyme may induce a strain to the substrate and strained substrate leads to formation of product so this is the enzyme and substrate and substrate is strained here and there is formation of enzyme substrate complex and further it enzyme catalysis occurs which leads to formation of product so together induced feed theory and substrate uh, strain theory they are operative mostly in the enzymatic action in the mechanism of action of enzyme we have seen how do enzymes work how does the enzyme substrate complex form now we will see in brief how does enzyme catalysis occur there are four mechanisms of enzyme catalysis the first is catalysis by proximity and orientation second is acid base catalysis third is covalent catalysis and the fourth is substrate strain catalysis in actual catalysis of enzyme more than one of the processes are simultaneously operative which help the substrate to attain a transition state leading to product formation the first mechanism of enzyme catalysis is by proximity and orientation and in this mechanism the substrate enzyme interaction so this is enzyme and this is substrate so this interaction occurs through binding of substrate to enzyme in the correct orientation in the lysozyme catalyzed reaction what is this lysozyme it is a corner store of innate immunity it is naturally occurring enzyme found in the bodily secretions like tears saliva milk and what is its function its function it is a antimicrobial function by enzymatically cleaving a glycosidic linkage of bacterial cell wall peptidoglycan which leads to cell death so here the active site of lysozyme so this is the active site of lysozyme and this binds to hexasaccharide unit of bacterial cell wall peptidoglycan so this is the hexasaccharide unit and the position is correct so there is correct geometrical orientation and proximity so in the lysozyme catalyzed reaction the enzyme catalysis occurs by proximity and orientation second mechanism of enzyme catalysis is acid base catalysis and it involves proton donors that is acid and proton acceptor that is base again in the lysozyme catalyzed reaction this is the lysozyme the transfer of proton from glutamate 35 so this is the glutamate 35 to the, and this is the substrate so the transfer of proton from this glutamate 35 to the glycosidic oxygen of substrate so this is the glycosidic oxygen of substrate it results in the cleavage of c1 o1 glycosidic linkage and here the carbocation is formed during the catalysis and neighboring ionized side chain of aspartate 52 it stabilizes it so this is the action of uh, enzyme lysozyme by acid base catalysis the another example is action of ribonuclease third mechanism of enzyme catalysis is covalent catalysis here it involves the formation of covalent bond between the substrate 
and enzyme or coenzyme so this is the enzyme chymotrypsin here the covalent intermediate is formed by the attack of negatively charged that is nucleophilic or positively charged that is electrophilic group present on the active site of enzyme so in the chymotrypsin catalyzed reaction the hydroxyl group of serine 195 so here serine 195 the hydroxyl group of serine 195 it forms a covalent bond with carbonyl carbon of peptide bond and that leads to hydrolysis of peptide bond so here there is hydrolysis of peptide bond by this serine 195 which forms a covalent bond here so in the chymotrypsin catalyzed reaction the mechanism of action of enzyme is by covalent catalysis enzyme catalysis by substrate strain it refers to formation of strain substrate bonds upon binding of substrate to preformed site on the enzyme here the strain substrate more easily attains the transition state the example is lysozyme catalyzed reaction here the substrate strain is produced by interaction of n acetyl glucosamine residues of substrate and amino acid r groups of lysozyme so in the lysozyme catalyzed reaction the enzyme catalysis occurs by three mechanism that is by proximity and orientation then by acid base catalysis and again by substrate strain catalysis so let's summarize today's topic in today's video we have seen active site of enzyme specificity and mechanism of action of enzyme the active site of enzyme is a cleft like region on the enzyme which is responsible for enzyme binding and catalysis enzyme specificity are of three types substrate specificity reaction specificity and stereo specificity substrate specificity can be again absolute relative and broad substrate specificity the mechanism of action of enzyme involves the Uh, first question that is how do enzyme work and now we know that enzymes work by lowering the activation energy activation energy is the energy required to reach the transition state second question how does enzyme substrate complex form so the enzyme substrate complex formation is explained by three theories lock and key model induced fit theory and substrate strain theory and mechanism of enzyme catalysis are proximity and orientation acid base catalysis covalent catalysis and substrate strain catalysis so i hope this video will be useful to you thank you for watching and happy learning